In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take this dice tower and turn it into a volcano. One or two strands that are kind of in, on your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too much? Is that okay? I feel like I look silly. You're not saying anything, Jake. I look silly. Oh, hi, guys. Welcome to Mob Hammer 40K. I'm Mob, and guess what? I got my first ever commission painting. Well, kind of. I have a friend, he doesn't play Warhammer. <laughs> Did you like that one? But he does play a lot in D&D as well as a bunch of board games. And one of his side hobbies is making dice towers. And for the first time, he ended up using Sculpty, a kind of clay molding arts and crafts material you can get from a bunch of stores like Flick and made his dice tower out of that from scratch. However, it didn't really look the greatest without any coloring. So as a project, he gave it to me and asked me to paint it up and make it look extra special. And while he originally told me that it was supposed to look like a castle slash tower, when I saw it, I saw something different. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I took this dice tower and turned it into a volcano. First things first, we start off with Vallejo Black Primer, load it up directly into the airbrush and we get to spraying. After letting the primer dry, we pull out Golden's Titanium White and begin to spray the areas where we will eventually see our lava. Note that we are also spraying around some of the edges. This is going to be key for our later step of adding a cracking layer of volcanic rock over the lava. Grabbing the contrast paint Magador Flame, we move on to my favorite step, adding color. We're still gonna be using our airbrush for this step as we slowly build up the layers of red all over our white undercoat. After admiring the look of the tower, it's time to move on to brushwork. Putting Vallejo Sun Yellow onto my wet palette, I load up my brush, being careful to wipe off excess moisture. I edge highlight all of the raised sections of the magma, as well as do a slathering around the corners and edges of the tower. Wanting to add another layer of bright yellow, I grab Arctic White to use and build a foundation. Grabbing Imperial Fist Yellow Contrast Paint, I then go over all the white sections. Using the shiny varnish, Technical Art Coat, we completely cover all the lava to help protect it from rolling dice and from our upcoming Morden Earth layer. This was gonna be my first time using Morden Earth, and according to online tutorials, it was recommended that I use watered down PVA glue as a base layer before applying. This would help with the cracking effect. Now it was time for the moment of truth. I used a scrap brush to apply the Morden Earth. It was quite thick. It was advised that I laid on in very thick globs. However, in retrospect, it turned out I could have added a lot more to get an even stronger cracking effect. But I was very scared about undoing all the hard work I did. In the end, after a dry, the effect ended up looking a bit more subtle than I hoped it would be, but still looked pretty cool. Let me know in the comments your thoughts and advice on working with Morden Earth if you have experience. I noticed that it also looked a little bit different color-wise from the color of my black primer, so I proceeded to just cover the entire tower in Morden Earth. As I said, it was more subtle than intended, but I was really liking how it was coming along. The tower had this really nice charcoal look to it, but it looked like it needed a little more definition. I made a decision to grab Stonewall Gray, put it on my dry palette, and get to work dry brushing the entire rock surface of the tower. Going another step further, I grab a piece of cutout cardboard and make sure it is slightly larger than the base of the tower. I glue it together using PVA glue and bust out my golden molding paste. If you've seen my video on the Armature Warglaive, you can probably guess where this is going. We're making waves. I build up a layer of the paste using a brush. After letting it harden for 30 minutes, I put Nighthawk Gloom Contrast Paint into my airbrush and begin coloring my water. Next, I add dead white and layer along the raised edges of the waves to create the foam effect. Then 
As a final step, I use Technical Art Coat once again to give the water a shiny, wet look. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying the video. Thank you for watching thus far. If you're liking what you're seeing, please be sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe if you're not so already. We're a young channel and every little bit helps. And with that, let's get back to the video. And there we have it guys. I was so excited for this project because it was something completely different I haven't done before. I was always dealing with figurines, humanoid figures, and I got to do terrain. And it gave me a lot of fun ideas for things I could do with my own miniature painting, my own basing. And it was really fulfilling to work on a friend's project and be excited about seeing their reaction to the hard work I put into it. Anyways, I hope that this inspires you to try some new things. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Catch you next time. Bye.